Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, welcome to another episode of the Health Fix Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. And on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about my experience with changing my diet and food and the experience of my dad, my dog, and my husband. So how all three of those guys benefited. So if you're watching this via video, you might notice I look a little torn up. My, my nose has got a little cut. I've got a big bruise above my eyebrows here. I was babysitting a cat and it decided to latch onto my face. This is not good. <laughs> I love animals, but holy cow, I, I have to admit I'm a little afraid of cats at the moment. But nevertheless, I am looking a little funky. But for those who can't see me, we're going to move on. So how did food quality change my life, the life of my family members, and even my dog? So first and foremost, I want to give a little background here. Of course, I'm a naturopathic doctor. And, and in, in naturopathic medicine, we learn whole foods cooking. I actually learned in school, we sat down and had classes where we got to put meals together and, and cook things from scratch which I knew beforehand going in, my mom was probably a quintessential hippie. We made a lot of our own food. She wasn't the greatest cook, but we tried, right? So nevertheless, it was fun to go to Bastyr and learn how to cook. We had a whole semester of Whole Foods cooking. We even had a garden outside of the campus where we could go out and pick things and put them into the meals we we're making. Now, if you Ever are in the Kenmore, Washington area, you can actually visit the campus that I went to. It is in St. Edward State Park. And, and you can check out stuff, which is really cool. You can go look at our garden. You can look at the different paths of walking and whatnot at the Bastyr campus. So I invite you to check that out because it, that's what sold me on the campus, the nature. And it's a little short walk to Lake Washington too. So plug for, plug for hanging out at Bastyr. But what am I getting at here? I'm getting at the fact that when I went to Bastyr, I got really excited about cooking again, really excited about using herbs in my food, like not just like cooking herbs, like medicinal herbs, which actually are the same thing, like oregano, antimicrobial. How cool is that? Rosemary helps increase blood flow and circulation. Basil does too. So I got to learn about all these things. And I, I since then, I was like, boom, I love cooking. I wanted to cook and cook and cook. I even had a website back in 2010 to like 2013. It was called Recipe Whisperer. Um, but then life happened, right? And so this is where I bring this to. Life happens. And I found myself in the middle of my practice in Tacoma as things were getting busier. I found myself reaching for convenience things. Now, granted, I was still kind of in the department of eating closest to nature, but I was getting more packaged things that were organic but were a little bit more processed, like burritos and things I could microwave. I didn't even own a microwave for years while going to Bastyr and the entire time I lived in Colorado. But all of a sudden, here I am using a microwave again, doing things that I kind of started stepping out of the regular kind of thought process I had about keeping things as closest to nature and, and not using convenience things. Now, let's face it, life's busy. I'm not shaming anybody for using a microwave. I have one in my office today because it is easier to warm foods up. But I do not want to rely on it because we have to think about the radiation effect on the food. But more than that, I realized as I became busier, I started to more, rely more and more on things that someone else made. And I justified it because at least I was eating closest to nature <laughs> let's put it that way. I was eating not closest to nature, but I was eating organic, right? But unfortunately, I started to notice that I was having some troubles with my weight. I wasn't feeling as great. And at one point, I ended up with a head to toe rash on my body, intense itching. And where did it come from? Well, I was relying on protein powders because I was eating a whole bunch of sh or, or drinking a lot of shakes throughout the day because it was easy to drink shakes while working. I could, you know, I didn't have to warm it up, didn't have to do anything. And I didn't really think about, okay, I've got grass fed, grass finished, whey, protein, isolate, you know, checked all the boxes of what was, what you want to look for, but didn't realize that I'm eating bags of protein 
right? I'm eating protein in my stuff. And, and that was like my sole meals for weeks on end. Yeah, I was putting vegetables in, in the smoothies and things. But I wasn't eating true meat, getting protein that my body's used to. I was getting manufactured protein. Didn't do so well with my body. And to this day, I really struggle with protein powders. Maybe because protein powders are manipulated a little bit, right? Now, am I saying you can never have protein powders? No. What I'm saying is really, really thinking about what you're putting in your body when you start to get busy. And I relied, like I said, for months on end and even going into, oh gosh, probably a couple of years where I had a good run of regular shakes for breakfast, lunch, and even sometimes dinner, which is crazy. And it makes me feel somewhat like an imposter talking to patients about eating closest to nature when I was using a lot of these protein powders. So this is a problem, right? It's, it's not good. So I, what I invite you guys to be thinking about is like, okay, if you're having protein powders because you're, you're using it because you need to get in protein and, and it's working for you and it's one meal a day, it's not the end of the day, not the end of the world. But you want to think about if you have issues like fatigue, you're not feeling great, or what my issue ended up being after I got rid of all the rashes is I ended up having a lump on my breast and it was in my upper left outer quadrant. My mom died of breast cancer. My aunt died of breast cancer. So of course, a lump in my breast scared the heck out of me. And I had thermography done and that's what caught it. I went to have a mammogram. They said they didn't see anything. That's a whole nother podcast. But the point is, is thermography is going to see things before mammograms, hands down. So I knew I had a lump because I felt it. Mammogram said, nah, nothing there. You're fine. So I was like, I got to do something because something's there. Thermography shows heat inflammation in the body. And so I knew that there was a process there that maybe it's not showing up, even though I'm feeling something there, which I ultimately determined that I was probably feeling a lymph node that was swollen because of multiple things going on with how I was eating and working on convenience foods. So when this all happened, I was flying back and forth from Wisconsin to Tacoma to see patients as I still do today. But when I would come to Washington, I would go back to eating a little bit more processed organic foods, meaning like burritos, meaning like things I could warm up and microwave easily. Someone else made them. I didn't know what was in them necessarily other than what was on the label. And when you read a label, you can only assume so far because there's a 20% rule of error or margin of error on any label in the U.S. So I got to thinking with my coming back and forth, and yes, I was eating out a little bit more too, that maybe some of this inflammation in my breast wasn't necessarily from something I was doing wrong physically, but it was more something I was doing wrong in terms of the food department. And I'm saying something doing wrong. I don't want to put it to that negative space. I just wasn't, I wasn't being cognizant of what I was doing. I was thinking it says organic, it's good, right? It says it's it's processed. It must be okay if it says it's organic and I'm buying it from a, a co-op basically in Tacoma where I, I trust what's going in the food. But when I go out to eat, I don't know, right? You don't know. And most restaurants are not going to be 100% organic by any means. So when you find yourself eating out more and you find yourself reaching for a little bit more of, of processed things, you have to know that there's, there's some risks with it. So once I saw that my breast mammogram or sorry, my breast thermography was off, I knew I had to do something because, oh, I am not going down like that is, is where my mind is. Now I don't have the genetics. My mom didn't either. Everything was estrogen positive. So was my aunts. So I know that if something's popping off estrogen in my body, I want to nip it in the bud right away. Now, things that are processed have to be heated. Now, you might have some plastic that is packaging these items. That also can contribute to inflammation within the body. That could have been it on its own. Or the packaging could have had certain types of xenoestrogens, which are fake estrogens that get into the body and can manipulate your hormones. So I took that into account and stopped eating anything that came in a package. I did that for an entire year. I went 
pretty serious about growing all my food at my house. We don't lit, we, we don't have a, a hundred percent organic garden because we live in an area of Wisconsin where they do spray pesticides. So we couldn't control exactly what was going on in the area of our garden, but we knew we weren't putting anything on our produce. And then we were canning everything and we spent the entire year eating from our garden, minimal times out. And when I had my thermography done, the fellow who read my thermogram, the results said, what did you do? You've changed the inflammation in your breast completely. And the only thing I had changed was I stopped getting any foods that were processed. I stopped protein powders. I stopped anything that was convenience food. Now, I, I haven't been to a fast food restaurant in 20 years, but I was going out to eat with folks. I stopped doing that. Like we maybe ate out a handful of times in the, in the course of a year. I wasn't going out regularly like we used to do. And my breast tissue changed and my inflammation in my breast changed, completely gone. So there is something to eating your own food and when you know what is in it. Now, where did I shop? I use Thrive Market for anything that is going to be grains. So yes, grains are packaged. There's no way around that. But as soon as we, we get those, we are using them right up. We're not putting them in anywhere where they can get heated up. They are kept fresh in the cabinet or pantry. And with Thrive Market, I'm also using their glass bottles of things such as coconut aminos, such as their apple cider vinegar. So I was going after glass, things in glass, not plastic from them. And if you're interested in looking at the items from Thrive Market and getting things that are organic and more cost effective, check them out. There's a banner that's going to be underneath the this, this podcast on the website at drjcrossnd.com. So if you want to check that out, go for it. I stand by working with them. They do have quality control in terms of what products they are sourcing and how they're doing things. The other side of this is I was using fruits and vegetables exclusively from my garden and fruit really boiled down to organic fruits and fruit from, so the only fruit from my house is apples. And so applesauce and apples and dried apples and apple crisps are what I kind of, and, and not apple crisps like the dessert, it was dehydrated apples. I dehydrated tomatoes. I ground them up and made a tomato paste so that we did not have to make any more sauces or any or grab any sauces we were making ourselves. So really the only other place that I was getting food from was Butcher Box and Good Ranchers for my meat, which are grass-fed, grass-finished beefs and bison and also poultry that is in, in, in different things that are raised um pasture, pasture raised. So that's what I cut everything down to. And to this day, I will not eat things that are not organic if I am in control. Am I going to go to a friend's house and be like, oh, no, I can't eat that because it's not organic. No, I'm not that person. But I keep it to a minimum. Most of the time I invite people over to my house so I can cook. <laughs> it's a little secret that I, I do just to kind of help keep things in check. And I have a lot of friends that kind of know how neurotic I am. So they're pretty good at it too. But nevertheless, you can influence your friends. You can inc influence your family. My family's all trained. They know what I like. And, you know, to an extent, if I am at someone else's place, I'm just going to bring stuff. So you can do this too. Now you might think, oh my gosh, that's a, a long way to go. Well, if you saw the change on your breast going from being inflamed and knowing that inflamed breast tissue can turn to cancer and then seeing it go away, you're like, okay, that's it. Everything I'm going to get is going to be organic and I'm going to try to eat as closest to nature. I'm going to minimize the amount of processed stuff and in fact, ditch it as much as possible. And can you do, can you get away from like having rice that is not packaged at some point in a plastic bag or container? No, like there are some things you cannot avoid, but you can put them into conditions where they're not exposed to heat. You can put them in glass jars. You can take care of these things.
The other big thing that we really switched up in our home is we started sprouting seeds. So radish, broccoli sprouts, broccoli sprouts, quarter cup a day is linked to reducing breast cancer and cancer. There is research on that. I've also been sprouting, you know, we've been sprouting gar even garbanzo beans. Beans and lentils are heavily sprayed with pesticides. And I would rely on a lot of that stuff too. Like I would grab hummus because I'm like, okay, it's healthy. You know, maybe it's not organic, but how bad can it be? I also, and, and I apologize to all my patients. I also kind of went on the dirty dozen list for what had the most pesticides on it in terms of vegetables and fruits. And unfortunately this day and age, we can't even go by that. It is best to go more towards all hundred percent organic. So something to think about there. Now that's my health. Now in 2021, I moved home from, from Washington state. I moved to Wisconsin to take care of my dad. And my dad was having some neurological stuff going on. He was tripping and falling. He was having trouble swallowing. He was having trouble with his digestive system. And in past years, he had always said when he come out, when he had come out to stay with me, his gut felt amazing. And he wouldn't have chronic diarrhea. When we moved with him, he said he had the best year of his digestive system ever because he was 24 seven us cooking food for him. And he said, my gut felt so good. Now that I don't live with him anymore, he has some struggles with his gut. But what has happened is his swallowing has improved. Do we have little episodes here and there if something's a little dry? Sure. But for him, his health really turned around when he started to eat closest to nature foods. And to this day, he does a lot better when he eats closest to nature foods. Now, my husband. My husband, when we first met, back in 2008, thought I was the weirdest person in the entire world in terms of telling him like, no, we have to get organic. No, we have to try to eat things closest to nature. And I would yell at him all the time about buying the cheap chicken at the store. And in fact, to the point where he would make food and I'd be like, no, I'm not eating that. And he would get really mad at me. And he, he's just like, whatever, I'm not cooking for you anymore. But eventually... 10 plus years later, he was like, maybe she's on to something. Because when I first met him, he had skin rashes that were flaky. They're very yeasty in nature. It was on his chest, it was on his back. I haven't seen a skin rash on him, at least in the last five years or so, maybe more since changing up things. He's more energetic, he feels good, and his digestive system is working well. That's the biggest changes he's seen with changing up our diet. And that was really took took some convincing because he was eating fast food even when we lived in Tacoma four years ago. And now he's realized after having the homemade produce, the homemade pro homegrown produce and all of the things we do now, he's realized the benefits. And if I had him on the podcast right now, it's, I'm sure he would tell you over and over again, he feels good. He feels better. But more than anything, his skin looks amazing compared to when we first met. Now my dog. So Brian, the golden retriever, he used to have really good quality as closest to nature pet food, right? We were giving him raw kibble and he was getting that regularly and his weight was going up, kind of like you see with most golden retrievers. My previous beloved golden retriever bear was probably about 92 pounds and we struggled to get his weight down for years, but we weren't thinking about the fact that could it be his food we were giving him good quality food but we didn't really think about raw food we didn't think about just feeding him what we ate in the veterinary world holistic vets will tell you that raw food works great there's a great book out there the forever dog take a look at that book it will change your mind on pet food i believe the pet world the veterinary world is no different than the food system for humans. I think it's making our pets sick. I believe that is what caused my dog bear to not live more than 12 years and die of a strange kind of lung cancer, lymphatic, weird, I don't even know. They didn't, we never got a concrete answer. He was fine. And then like two weeks later, he wasn't and he was dead. Crazy. Now, Brian... 
we didn't want him to go out that way, but we're busy, right? So we were supplementing and we still do to a little extent with raw kibble, like raw versions of kibble. But here's the thing. Anytime he gets that now, he's got the worst toots you could even imagine. Now dogs are known for their stinky toots and I think it has to do with their food. So Brian was getting ear infections left and right over and over again. We took him to the vet that would try a treatment, antibiotics, yeast treatments, all the things. And he kept getting them over and over again. And yes, dogs with floppy ears like golden retrievers are prone to these things. But we were like, what is going on? Nothing is working for him. So we decided to tr treat him like us and feed him what we ate. Because I tried the raw food thing. I was also, I also fostered a dog that was quite sick for some time and was, was learning about it at the time. But that dog didn't make it. He was, he was way too far gone, I think, when I got him. Those of you who were, were in my practice, you might remember Toby, my, my lovely Toby. But it didn't work out for Toby. But Brian, we started feeding Brian raw foods, and then we moved into just feeding him what we were eating. Our vets thought we were nuts. In fact, when we just took Brian back to the vet, to have him have a checkup, they took him away from us because he had lost so much weight, they thought we were abusing him. Not cool. Because they were like, we never see golden retrievers lose this much weight, something's going on. <sighs> when he got the lab, when we got the labs back, they were like, he's totally fine. I was like, yeah, of course he is. Because he's eating closest to nature foods that do not have pesticides on them. Because we are feeding him meat that is grass-fed, grass-finished, or pasture-raised, it's organic, and we're giving him fruits and vegetables from our garden that we had either frozen or canned over the course of the last year. We also were supplementing with a little bit of organic rice and other types of grains. And guess what? He hasn't had an ear infection since we started giving him the closest to nature foods that were organic and no pesticides used on them. He's been absolutely fine. He also lost 12 pounds. He is fit. He looks amazing. And he's not kind of pulling that trajectory of getting fatter and fatter like a lot of golden retrievers do. Despite being accused of abusing him, which we're not now because, of course, the vet sees that his labs are perfectly fine. I hope that the vet wakes up and sees this. Because I never intended to feed my dog what I eat, but because his ear has not had any issues, he's not lumpy like golden retrievers get lumpy. He's completely healthy. He's energetic, sometimes a little too much, <laughs> but he is completely healthy. And in my mind, that is proof that the closest to nature and the minimal amount of toxins we have on our food, the better. So you might be thinking right now, like, okay, great. How do I do this? This sounds like a lot of work. Look, I am busy. I still travel back and forth between Washington and Wisconsin. I get to Washington. I see patients day in, day out. I have to figure out how to meal prep for myself. My friends are gracious to bring things by for me and cook for me, but I'm not going to rely on people to take care of me all the time. You know, it's... It's busy. We all live busy lives. Meal prepping and really knowing what do I need to make this happen so that I'm not relying on processed foods is crucial. At this point, I have chosen to use two different meat suppliers, like I said, Butcher Box and Good Ranchers. And I've also chosen to use Thrive Market for the things that I can't um, get myself, like rice. I'm not growing rice. There's no rice patties in my backyard, I wish. Quinoa, things of that nature. I will use Thrive Market. Like I said, coconut aminos, things of that nature. Different types of things from that. I make my own sauces. So my tomato sauces, my tomato or pizza sauce, I make that myself as well. And I also will make my own mustard. Ketchup, all of it. 
we're making we're going to make it all at the house at this point now coconut aminos i do not have access to coconuts so things like that you you might want to use something like thrive market so i use the combination of those in addition to what i grow in my garden now you might be thinking doc i do not have the ability to grow a garden that's okay you can get food from your local farmers markets you can get food from your local grocery stores the thing is, is I, the longer I've been in the game with food and, and watching people's health and their food, the more I think it's important to know our farmers, getting to know who's growing your food, because now you know how they are processing things and what they're doing. I don't know if I 100% trust everything that goes on in grocery stores. It sounds like a bold statement. And for many of you, you might be thinking, well, that's unrealistic. And maybe it is for you. That's okay. Point being, if you can get things closest to nature, you can get things that are organic, and maybe you could even get things that have not been treated with pesticides, but might be in the store, because some of the stores will have that and they'll just label it that way. That's okay. And it's also okay to find farms that aren't using pesticides that aren't certified organic. It's expensive to be certified organic. So if someone tells you they're not using pesticides and you've investigated their farm, you've been out there, hey, it's a good option. CSAs, so supporting a farmer to grow and then getting boxes of produce from them every week huge it's quite helpful to do things of that nature so you want to have sources for everything first then after that it's taking a day on the weekend in meal prepping that is what got me through when i was the busiest in tacoma and what gets me through now when i'm here i have to meal prep otherwise i'm going to be going towards at this point, chomps, <laughs> beef sticks and things, right? Like it's it's epic, you know, beef sticks, things of that nature. And so this isn't where I want to be. It's processed, it's in plastic. It's not, my, it's not my jam. I'm trying to get things that are all made and then I can package it up into glass and bring it out when I need it to eat. So it takes effort to be healthy. It takes effort to bring inflammation down the body. It takes effort, but it's so worth it because your health is your wealth. So you want to be thinking about that. Now, what else do I do in particular for, for my family? We're filtering our water. We're filtering the air in the home. We're looking at how airflow impacts us. And we're also going in, and I got to get back to this for a second. I'm also buying wheat flour from a farm that is growing wheat that is ancient wheat. So older wheat varieties that were cultivated, actually, I shouldn't say ancient. It's in this case, it's not ancient. It is 1900s Wisconsin wheat that they're growing on land that has never had pesticides placed on it. And they're cutting it using hand techniques and milling hand by hand. Amazing stuff. It's called Anarchy, a Anarchy Acres in Racine. Well, Mount, I think it's Mount Pleasant, but near, near the Racine, Wisconsin area. Just go to anarchyacres.com. Very cool stuff. And I bet if you're not in Wisconsin, because I'm sure that not all of you are in Wisconsin, there are other farms just like this. If you go to the website, eatwildwild.com, you can find farmers in your area and what they're up to, what they sell, how they process things. And you can contact them too and ask them, interview them, go to the farms. My favorite thing is to go straight up to the farm and see what they're up to. We have a farm in Athens, Wisconsin, where he does pizza on the farm. And we can see everything he's up to out there. He has a CSA. It's really neat. It's really neat. And knowing your farmers, getting to know them is so, so important. Now, like I said, this isn't an easy feat. It's not something that everyone can do totally, but the more you can get away from the conventional food system, the better. And within the conventional food system, like I said before, my previous podcast to this one was Zen Honeycut. We can use our dollars, our pocketbooks to speak up that we want a better food system. Do I believe that my mom and my aunt would be alive today if certain things would have been different with the food they were eating? Quite possibly. My mom was a hippie, but she fell hard into the microwave. She would microwave things in plastic. We didn't know, right? In the 80s, we didn't know. But she thought it was neat. 
and started doing that. And she would buy the low fat things. And she would buy certain things at the grocery store that were newer and considered healthy because she fell into the healthy marketing. The marketing's hype. It's hype. All of the vegan cheeses and all that stuff out there, it's got a huge amount of oils in those things. And we're looking at a lot of things that are considered healthy, but they have an ingredient list a mile long. Part of this podcast for me, why I do this and why I'm so passionate about this podcast is because I really want folks to take care of, their, of themselves and to know like what is out there, what could be harming you that we're not being told. A 20% margin of error on labels? That's ridiculous. Adding fortified folic acid to foods when 50% of the population has a genetic mutation where you can't even process the fortification, the, the fortified folic acid. This is crazy. This is making people sick, decreasing their ability to detox. And I mean detox chemicals, but also detox hormones. In the space that I work in day in, day out with helping women to optimize their hormones, if we can get women to eat closer to nature and not eat fortified foods, even some of the organic foods are fortified if they're in a box, like cereals, crackers. Just because something says it's from whole foods does not mean that it is healthy. For the love of God, Amazon owns whole foods now. And according to Zen, it's not been any better back in the day, but gosh, you know, I fell into the hype too. I was like, you know, oh, Whole Foods, it's healthy. We used to joke, if it's organic, there's no calories in it. You know, it, it's joking aside, it's still processed. Anything that does not come in its form closest to nature, you have no idea what they've done to it. If it's organic, yeah, it's not going to have pesticides, but you still don't know if those seed oils, even if they're organic, you still don't know necessarily what's going on in there. So the foundation for health really does start with what you eat and making a commitment to really trying as hard as you can to eat things closest to nature. And if you can't because you're too busy, that's okay. Get a food service that has these same values. There are ones out there. Is anything perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. And that's okay. The more you eat Things that are not laden in pesticides and not processed, the healthier you're going to be. I see it over and over again with my patients. It's easier to balance hormones. My breast tissue blew my mind that even the amount that I was eating, which is a lot less than the average American, completely changed the inflammation in my breast. That is huge. How I've seen my dog's health turn around, my husband's skin turn around, and even my dad, it's incredible. And that's immediate family. I've seen so many patients turn around over the years. I'm very passionate about our food system and how much it means to tell the authorities that be that we don't want their crap. Now, this podcast isn't about being on a soapbox, but it's helping folks to live better. That's all I've ever wanted for anybody is just to know the truth and to know what really works. There's a lot of folks on social media saying, do this trick, do that trick, do this hack, do this hack, this, try out this new healthy processed bar. The more that a factory is involved in creating something, the more I want to run the other direction. And I encourage you to really do your homework on the products that you're eating, the things that are processed, the things that you eat the most. It's not the one-offs. It's the everyday, day in, day out. What are you addicted to? What's your vice? What kind of things are you going after? The other really big change that has made a lot of difference in my patients' lives is changing out their wine, the alcohol. 
there is arsenic used in the processing of or growing of wine. There are dyes that are put into wine to give it that red wine color you're looking for. How do I know this? Well, I'm the one who does the testing on the heavy metals and the food dyes and all of the toxins in the body. And what do I see? Arsenic. When I ask people, well, you got some arsenic in, in your blood. Where, where do you think that came from? Most people are like, what? I don't live anywhere where I know that there's arsenic. And I'm like, do you like wine? That's, they're going to say yes. And I'm going to go, okay, that's where that's coming from. Same thing goes with the, the food sensitivities. I will see sensitivities to dyes. There's a test called the ALCAT food sensitivity testing. It will test every single dye. And when adults come back with blue, red, and purple, not purple, it's blue and red. But when they come back from the test with blue and red and red carmine and blue lake and all the other ones showing up, there are only two main places I could find people having the dye issues. One, if they, I mean, actually there's three. If you really like candy, okay, fine. But if you're not into candy, if you're not into candy, where's this coming from? Wine, where's the other thing it's coming from? Lipstick. Most guys aren't gonna wear lipstick this day and age, you never know, but nevertheless, most women are the ones with the lipstick. And guess what? Those colorings. Dyes in your makeup, lipstick, that's where some, that's going to show up. But more often than not, it's wine. So you want to be super neurotic about where you're getting your alcohol from. Same thing goes for all the other whiskeys, uh, you know, the hard alcohols and things. You want to know, like, you want to know every single thing you put in your mouth. You want to know where it's coming from. All the way down to the pharmaceuticals. I use compounding pharmacies more often than not because we can make a clean substance if we need to, a clean medicine, because wheat, gluten, titanium dioxide, colorants of other kinds, stabilizers of other kinds, there's a lot of junk in your pharmaceuticals. Women with thyroid issues have tons of issues because the levothyroxines and the lyothrenines and the NP thyroids and the armor thyroids and the tyrosins and all the different medications out there, there are stabilizers in these things that can make you sick. So I could go on for hours on this, but the point being is you, if you want to be healthy, you want to avoid cancer, you want to live long and you want to live well, you got to look at what you're eating and putting in your mouth. You want to know where your food's coming from, your medicines are coming from, your supplements are coming from. You want to know all of this because it is going to make an impact on your health. I just gave you four examples within my family. I could give you thousands within my practice. The bottom line is you can help to change the food system by using your wallet, spending your money on the things that are non-toxic. Now you might be thinking, Doc, I can't afford this stuff. I'm I'm darn broke. It's it's been a rough year. Okay, great. Eating closest to nature can help. And if nothing else, just get organic fruits and vegetables. Fudge on some of the other stuff. Now, of course, animals that products you might be eating, yeah, they might be eating some glyphosated and pesticide laden grains and and things of that nature. At least it's secondary exposure versus primary. Something to think about. Wild caught fish. Get to know your fishermen. There's a lot you can do. You can even grow your produce on your back porch. In Tacoma, we did not have a backyard. We had to create one because we had concrete. We also grew a lot in planters. I can teach you how to do that. I would love to hear from folks if you want to learn how to do that kind of stuff. You want to learn how to grow. We are all in. The more I can teach folks that, that is true medicine. That is where we get change. When you can take a hard look at what you're eating and make a difference with your choices. It's incredibly important for your health over and over again. It's not, you're, you can't supplement your way out of a poor diet and you can't supplement your way out of processed foods that are making you sick. So if you're wondering what you can do right now, get to know your farmers first. Go to the farmer's markets or go to eatwild.com. 
You'll learn who's in your area, who has what to help you out in that department. The next step there is if you need meat sent to you, if you don't have a local farmer that you can find, go to Butcher Box or go over to Good Ranchers. From there, if you're looking for staples like rice and lentils and things of that nature that are sprouted, by the way, sprouted is easier to digest. So I purchase those more commonly that are organic. That's Thrive Market. There are details for Thrive Market in my podcast notes in the banner there. It'll say Thrive Market. Check them out as well. That's at drjkrausnd.com. So that was a long-winded one, but I hope that this has at least given you a little bit of a nugget to see that what you eat matters. You can make change. We can change the food system because let's face it, it's tough to go back to nature with a lot of things, but if you can do it, by all means, if you can prioritize it, this is this is the way to go. And take advantage of your farmer's markets and support the people who are trying really hard to help create a healthy food system for you. And if that doesn't work, you know what? Join a community garden, grow with other folks, trade back and forth food. I mean, one plant of zucchini, you can feed an army with that. You can grow that in a pot. Same thing goes with cucumbers. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. You can pickle those suckers and now you got pickles. There's so much you can do when you grow your own food and you team up with others. It's just a matter of getting to know where the community gardens are and making friends. You don't have to have any experience. Most of the time there's there's master gardeners in these groups. So there are no real excuses for not putting the effort in to eat closest to nature. You are worth it. It's your medicine. It's more valuable than any supplement out there. And it will benefit you, no doubt, because out of all of the things, all the fancy protocols, all of the different things that I give to my, diff my patients, changing diet. And I'm not talking about going on a diet. I'm just talking about going closest to nature. That moves the needle the most out of all the things I recommend. Yes, hormones, bioidentical hormones can help. Yes, thyroid medicines can help. But what moves the needle the most? I mean, yes, minerals can help. Yes, vitamins. I mean, we could go on forever, but changing your diet moves the needle the most and really being consistent with embracing knowing your farmers, knowing how you grew your food, knowing where it's coming from, and really embracing meal prepping, huge. I know some people are going to cringe. Some people are going to say it's not going to happen. Fair enough. If you can't do it, find a food service that can do it for you. You will see change. You will feel better. And I have no doubt that this will move the needle the most for you. All right, you have survived another episode of the Health Fix podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Janine Krause. You have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, health junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission, to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E-N-D.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.